Welcome back to the Sawblade 666 YouTube channel. I'm Daniel Sawblade. I'm Cartoon Ryan. Today we're going to talk about R. Crumbs America, a uh, collection of different stories, and this was published by Last Gasp. We'll take yeah. a deep dive into this thing. <laughs> All right, so Robert Crumb's America. It really it, is his America, isn't it? It really is. And well, actually, uh, it, it, not just his America. Some of it's kind of a... It's pretty <laughs> spot truth, on to what... Truth-telling. Yeah, he, he saw the writing on the wall before he left and uh, when he went to France. But uh, this is just like snippets of some of his work because, I mean... It's tough to get everything in chronological order that that man did. Um, but just to show you basically Robert Crumb's mindset when it comes to modern America, which he despised. By the way, this is a compilation of different stories pulled from different things. Yeah. Um, and this was published by Last Gasp. Yeah, forgot to mention that. Yeah, Last Gas published this, and uh, I mean, he's basically just, I mean, this is 1975 when he did this little page right here. Here I was born. And and look at this, dude. I mean, America the Cruel bu Bully. And then America the Glutton, you know, I mean, he's just foreshadowing America the Greedy. America the Ugly really hates, uh, you know, visual pollution and noise pollution. Um, and you'll see there's there's a really iconic uh, panel at the very end where he just shows, you know, the metamorphosis to what America kind of became, the modern day hyper capitalist landscape we live in. Right. Or hellscape for some people. Um, and I'm not going to go through everything because, I mean, there's so many panels here, but I'm going to kind of just go through what sticks out for me. Um, I highly recommend this if you can get it. Um, this and, and is, Crum, oh, go ahead. by the way, I wanted to interject. Mm -hmm. Crumb is a very controversial, uh, person. Very. Because of his work. <laughs> and what we would like to or I would like to mention on the channel, um, set aside how, what you feel about the subject matter, because like I said, for some, it, it's highly controversial. You may even disagree with some of the it, points. But where, where we're coming from is the fact that there's no denying the draftsmanship and storytelling ability that that Robert Crumb has with his work. As cartoonists and illustrators, we just really, really admire uh, the craftsmanship of, of the work. Yeah. Um, it, I've been a Crumb fan since the Crumb movie came out 30 some years ago. And that's, that's where we're coming from with on this channel yeah because a lot of his stuff i mean it's definitely not it wouldn't fit in today's landscape at all um and it's, it's it's it, it yeah. it's offensive some a lot of, of it, it i disagree with yeah some of it's pretty it's offensive stuff yeah. but what we focus on is the art that's our thing is the art and that's what we're all about and his views are his views alone you know it's not not like i'm endorsing what he says in some of this stuff or how he said it but at the same time, he was trying to point out the flaws um, and, and problems that he had with the country he was born in. And he did it in a phenomenal way, I mean, by expressing it through art and writing. And the end result is what we see here. And a lot of it I do agree with. A lot yeah, of it I, I do don't. too. But that's everything. Everybody yeah. has different opinions. Yeah. But yeah, if you get this, if you do get into Robert Crumb stuff, you never heard of him. Be, be warned. Be it's, warned. It's Some not... It may be... Yeah, well, it's politically incorrect in every way a lot possible. Of it's yeah, yeah, a lot of racial, sexual stuff that wouldn't fly today. But like we like like we just said, we're into the art though more than anything. Um, but yeah, like I mean, look at this panel. So I mean, look at this whole page. It's it's hilarious, dude. He's basically talking about getting canceled before that was even a thing. You know, he's like they're after me because I tell the truth and. 
you know, I, I got to keep doing what I'm doing. It's just, I mean, but look, look at this. Uh, what I love about Crumb is, you know, immediately when you see his, his work that it's him right away, like on the spot, you know, it's him. But at the same time, he's very versatile with how he does uh, his comics because sometimes it's like super detailed and very, it's like super hatched. Like look at this trash can on this side. And then you look on this side, it's very bold. It's cartoony. Uh, cartoony. But at the same time, the dude can draw like blues musicians and it's like almost photorealistic. So uh, he's definitely, if not my favorite artist, he's like right there, top five. You know, he always Just has been. Draftsman. Yeah, there's no denying it. Yeah. Um, this was really cool too. This is a, a page about trash, like how wasteful we are. What are we throwing away? Yeah. Um, I mean, just just look at that. That's great. Look at the wheels. I love the cartoon. And another thing he does, uh, can't really see it from here that well, but he puts faces on the Cars. automobiles like yeah. cartoons, and it's hilarious, dude. Like that tra that this truck is struggling because <clears throat> of how much waste is is it's loaded up with it. But I mean, look how look at all this. Well, you got a guy hoarding over here. Uh. It's just so much it's going the on. Gluttony of America. Yeah, the like waste. Capitalism. Yeah. The, the. Yeah. Just all the waste and like how we go over to the other parts of the world and screw their stuff up. But uh, it's really cool, man. I just I, I love the feet, the 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 bodies, the way they that his. It's almost like when you see Crumb's work, you can see the figures bouncing up and down like the old cartoons. The way when they would walk, it's almost like that same posture. Yeah, his, his influence comes from those old 30s uh, yeah. like, cartoons. You know? Yeah, like Fleischer Studios and yeah. stuff. Um, pretty insane, uh, you know, over-the-top sexual stuff. Um, this is pretty funny, too, the white man's plight. Um, going to the next one, though, um, another one I want to highlight. Uh, the Adventures of Onion Head. This is a good example of what I was talking about earlier. Look how cartoony this one is compared to some of the other stuff I'm going to show you. I mean, dude, that, I mean, it almost looks like a cracked out. Uh, was it? Is it Tin 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 or who was it from the 30s? Uh, I don't remember. He had the dog with him. He looked like that, though. Oh, I'm okay. sure people will know what I'm talking about. But just the 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 cross hatching. I mean, just it's so badass, dude. The yeah, with Chrome, I've noticed like I can't pull anything out of my head at the moment. But yeah, I'll read something and it'll literally make me laugh out loud. Oh, dude! And then I'll turn around and read something else, and it's like I don't get it. Yeah, he really was. I don't know, could go to one extreme to the other with something being, yeah, you know, abstract and kind of just ambiguous to something straight to the point and you mm -hmm. get or relate to. Yeah, because like not only are you getting badass artwork, you're getting some really funny comedy. And like you just said a second ago, there's a lot of times like only he gets it really, whatever he's talking about. But it's still fun to look at. I mean, look at all this, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that's just crazy. <laughs> and uh, it, I get the sense a lot of it is just him over and over again. Look at all these people laughing at him. Oh yeah. It's just what he go he went through. You know, I think growing up and stuff. I mean, just look at that, dude. It's always just like like no hope. That's almost like the theme of a lot of his characters. It's just a hopeless situation a lot of times. But putting a funny... Yeah. Uh, like a really funny spin to it. Yeah, definitely. Oh, we were talking about this oh, yeah, panel yeah, earlier. We were. I really love the, the 1930s future <laughs> yes. look to it. The city of the future. And then, I mean, you look at... The cars and the uh, the ships that are flying, it has that 30s. So I'd say all the way up to the 50s vibe. I mean, right, look at that car. The back That's of a the car. Yeah. looks like a, you know. Yeah, it looks like the Batmobile basically. Yeah. 
Um, look at those droid, the androids or whatever robots walking around. Crazy stuff, dude. This guy's mind is just... It's on another level. Yeah, it's on another level, and it's basically just X-rated, offensive, just wackiness and, and it's all in cartoon form and it's just amazing and i like we mentioned before uh the movie from 30 years ago watch it if you can um you should it's just called crumb it's by i think is it terry Zig, Zigwa. ziggler or zig Zigwa. yeah Zigwa. yeah i think that's how you it start. starts with a z but <laughs> just look it up it's called thing. crumb yeah and uh, dude, it, that that's that's what blew me away immediately. Is when I saw that I became an instant fan. Um, this is just crazy, dude. Look at this. I, I just I marvel at his use of uh, the panels, the way he lays it out. But then, just everything going on, like each each panel is just explosive, and the emotion is there. The faces are hilarious. Yeah, I was always impressed with. Um, it's it's very much how I would approach mm -hmm. a comic where it's not super flashy panel mm -hmm. layout. It's very. Uh, it's very traditional. Yeah, you know, it's very just. I'm more linear, of a fan and, of this too, and, and he packs all the detail mm -hmm. in the panels. It's not about fancy panel layout. Which is more of a traditional approach. I'm more of a fan of this type of layout. I don't know why. Like, I just... I like the the segments. It's like a grid just, layout. Yeah, I, I love it. I just for comp... I do appreciate some of the outside of the bot, Like, the city. We were looking at that, you know, in our first video. Holy yeah. moly. Yeah. It can work. Yeah. Can you just got to do it right. But look... I mean, look at this. And on top, like, another thing to mention, it's just hilarious. Like, look at these things, dude. Yeah. It's really funny. The cream, what are they calling them? The cream puff, uh, rough, tough cream puffs. Like, what the hell? <laughs> it's like a parody of, like, just meathead jock. Yeah. I think. Look at that. Yeah. Do it. So do him, Sarge, and he punches a dude and his head blows up. Uh. Have you read this one all the way? Through? Yes, yes. It's it's hilarious. It's just it's so violent, man. I it's like I want to read a lot of it, but a lot of it I I you know I don't want to lose our channel too, so I don't really <laughs> read a lot. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. Well, I saw a couple things that that yeah. we zoomed past that luckily ho hopefully won't demonetize. <laughs> nah, no, nah, we'll be fine. But yeah, yeah he's very controversial. But then a lot of stuff isn't, in my yeah. opinion. It's it's some of it's very straightforward. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and it's fun stuff. You know. Yeah, it takes a lot to get me worked up, man. I just I love this is this is probably the funniest, one of the funniest, uh, I guess stories in this book. It's uh, about when he went to the Academy yeah. Awards. Yeah. And how out of place he was and how, you know, just phony the whole thing is. And it's just all, you know, it's just, it, he was nerve, it was just nerve wracking for me. He was very anti-establishment. He's anti-establishment. He's anti-social. He's anti just about everything. And uh, just kind of a grumpy old guy, dude. He was a grumpy old man before he was even old. And uh, it's just hilarious. Look at how dejected he is going up to the carpet. Like at first he's kind of checking everything. Out. I think it had to do with Fritz the cat, right? I'm not sure it does. Um, commission. Ticket to the Oscars. No, it's a job. It's something that really happened then. But uh, it's it's hilarious, dude, because like he's you know he's going in and he's nervous there's like protesters outside and stuff and then he's like going in to get his ticket all right go ahead you know and then like he's walking the carpet and you have all these big names and then it's him and he has his head down he's just he's sweating uncontrollably his wife's not with him everybody's got their arm candy it's so funny dude i'm surprised he even went to accept whatever award he was given 
you know. Yeah, I think he just had a ticket to it, and he was there to. But I, I think he was nominated. I don't even think he won anything. Uh, but I mean, look at this. The dude. difference in look hairstyles at, is yeah. really noticeable. Yeah, look at look, these faces are so fun. Yeah. <laughs> the faces are what kills me, dude. Like whenever you pick up a Robert Crumb book, you're bound to laugh. Like there's, I mean, or at least I am. I laugh every time. It, ki- I think it like, falls into a sort of sense of humor that yeah. we, you know, we both have. And yeah. Do you either identify with it or you don't? Um, I've only heard two camps: you either really love Robert Crumb or you fucking hate him. Yeah. You hate everything. Yeah. That he does. So. I but love what we try to do, or what we're trying to do with with Robert Crumb here, is just to objectively look at the the penmanship, the draftsmanship, the cartooning, and the storytelling too. Because uh, there's a lot of craftsmanship that oh, goes yeah. behind his work. The drawing is just it's unbelievable. Super. Yeah, it is. He it can is. draw anything. Yeah, he can. There's and it, not anything he can't draw. And it's it, it's it's. It's uh, and, totally his style, too. And, and as a cartoonist and illustrator, uh, that's such a it, it's such a desired skill and something you want to work on is to be able to draw anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This, Especially when you're doing comics. You know? Yeah. No, it's true. It's all true. But, yeah, it's, it's funny. He's just basically like, these people are phony. Like, I don't understand all the hoopla behind right. this. And. You know, the bright applause light is next to his face and it's going off all the time. He's like, why do they care so much about this stuff? And he's finally back home and the the true uh, true uh, uh, trademark of a, a anti so well, not even anti so uh, a uh, man. I'm trying to think of the word and I can't think of it. No, it's a person that uh, has social anxiety, basically. They can't wait to get home because it took everything inside of them to engage with a crowd of people. And it's just, it takes everything out of them, you know. And that's a great example of it right there on that last page. You know, he's, his wife's bringing the books over so he can calm down. This is like a, like a hermit. Basically. Yes, yeah, he can't handle social situations too well. Um, this is just another example of his cartooning and the the faces on the cars that I kills me that. it kills me it's hilarious I love dude that. look I at the, the teeth faces on the car yeah look at that the mighty dollar telling them to get back to work because that's what matters more than anything is that, oh, that yeah. almighty dollar look at that look at this shit dude the car has the teeth and and you know but then I it has a that. crown on top dude i love that the king why oh why the hell am i in Motor City. This is when he was living in Detroit, and uh, he was young, dude. He was he was. Uh, I didn't know he lived in Detroit. Yeah, it's in that it's in that documentary. He talks about it. Uh, he was in Detroit, and he was, was working. He was a card. He was working for American Greetings. No, American Greetings card. Yeah, and he That's hated right. it. It That's sucked. Right. He hated that job. He had to come up with shit on his own. But he was living in Detroit at the time. And at that time, that's when he. Jumped into that van with the hippies and went yes. to San Francisco and left his family behind. And this is like when Detroit was on the decline. You know, it started in the 60s. Like, the 50s was like the peak of Detroit. Right. Right. It was like an all-American. So now it's just a rubbled out wasteland. Um, Which apparently they're working on. They're working on it. Yeah, it's it's improved a little in the last... That's really post-apocalyptic five. Yeah. Yeah. This is funny too, right here. The high, yeah, the highlights of, of Detroit, dude. Look at this, America's best loved underground cartoonist. And what I love about it is he's showing, he's showing, I guess the the sights and sounds of Detroit, right? You know, but I, I love it, man. Look, this is just all his experience. The bus. Uh, the assembly line, the university, and this is back when it wasn't even how it is now, all dilapidated highlights of Detroit. The lettering, it's so cool. His lettering is oh, it's so amazing. good. It really is. It, it's superb. Yeah. Just down to this. Yeah. Too. 
That, all his lettering is so unique looking. It's all freehand. That's what I can't get over. This is hilarious too, man. It's really too bad. What I what I love about... Uh, Another change in style. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. What I love about it, it's like it's a change in style, but you know automatically who it is. I mean, but dude, the serious, like, you know, businessman type with like, you know... You know, it almost looks like... Uh, like it's hilarious, dude. Communist propaganda. Yeah, type kind of. Poster. Yeah, but look, look at that, dude. The <laughs> really, funny. Look, it's like stack of it's a stack of businessmen. That's really funny. And then you go down here, and it's like a piece of toast dancing, and just wackiness, man. So this, if I was a full time comic book artist, I would totally be going this route right here. Just insanity, you know. Look at that. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. This stuff's inspiring. It really is, you know? man. It makes you just want to. It makes you want to work and, and draw, produce and yeah. draw and come up with content. It's like we really want to. I really want to get back in into instilling that in people, you know. And that's kind of the aim of this. A lot of sacrilegious stuff. A lot of racial stuff. Um, it's just a. Kind of a microcosm of... I think with the race... We were talking about this mm -hmm. before we started filming. You, you have to look at where he's coming at. With, with, I don't think it's racist to be racist. No. Uh, he's... You know, not to get too, too into that. Yeah. But he, he's making you think. Well, he's showing how at the time especially... The further back you go, the racism was more blatant in, in American society. So he's pointing out how racist and the country was. In some cases, that's really coming back. To yeah, him, but. yeah, but that's what he was doing with it, in my opinion. I, I'd have to ask him personally, but he was pointing out. I don't think him himself was racist. No, I don't think so. He was just pointing out the stereotypes that people did. And he did did it to piss people off. Like, yeah, this is this is this is our society. What. This is see, and then here here's another example. Uh, this point the finger story. Look at this style compared to what we just saw here, and then over here it's more of that. Look at that. Just yeah. etched out, and it's it's more. Just uh, uh still cartoony. It's cartoony, but it, yeah, it's it's more you know actual just everyday looking people. It's really awesome, man. It's just the. Look at that. The Trump character. Yeah, Trump looking guy. I mean, that's amazing, dude. The hair and the, the yeah. double chin thing. It's just, it's. Yeah, if anything, man, you just gotta just be floored with how amazing the, uh, the art and the layouts of all this is. And the storytelling, dude. It's just. And then that famous cross hatching. Mm hmm. The famous cross hatching and the lines and. It's like sometimes he'll go thick lines right here. Other times he's just kind of etching stuff in. Uh, there's Mr. Natural. I like that face a lot. Yeah, That's me really too. Cool. That's funny too, man. The little slits to add oh, the glare yeah. like the 1930s cartoons. Very, very almost Mickey yeah. Mouse looking. And then this right here is one of my favorite things ever. Um, this is so iconic. It's a short history of America. You start out with nothing but open land. Which would be almost pioneer yeah. days. Even before, you know. And then this is after with the expansion of the railroads. And then there's the railroad down there, the horse-drawn carriage, little cottage there. Look at that. Progresses. That's probably 1800s, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And then into like... This is 1800s for sure. This is like mid, probably mid-1800s. Late 1800s. Here we go. The last look at that. Look at that. Another little house. Uh, look, tele look, telegraph wire. Then the phone lines. The phone. Look at that. Railroad crossing. There's other houses. It's so accurate with the. Detail. It is. It's a, and it's the same road in the same landscape, the whole time. And then look, there's the tree gets bigger over time too. Right. You see this tree? It starts out as a little, little tiny. Right. They just planted it, and look how big it gets over time. That's so cool. Yeah, and then look at that. Look, there's that tree. That tree's still there. Right. Look, same house though. 
the it, progression yeah it, it's it's really amazing yeah how it he really captured is. that progression this is like the 1910s basically or right right at the end of the 1800s and then you have cars it's like the 20s the 20s look at that and it's advancing more look at all these wires i mean you got the electric you know train right. cars above it then into like the 50s the 50s probably. this is like the yeah the 30s or whatever 40s 50s when he the 70s i guess is what this would be right look at that the building the building's still there it's a texaco but then it gets mowed down turn it into something else and then he's like what's what's next <laughs> this is funny yeah it's <laughs> hilarious then it just gets bombed out everything's done yeah and then you get the, the fun future. future oh he's he's got different options that's what it was the worst case scenario is a ecological disaster the fun futures you know techno yeah. techno fix on the march <laughs> or the what was it the yeah ectopian solution it's like living in the woods funny stuff man guy is uh that is a master he's a genius yeah a master robert yeah. crumbs america thanks for bringing yeah that. yeah no problem man and like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time